Hi, I'm Nicola Smith from foreverfit.tv. In this video, I'm going to give you your ultimate guide to gluten-free living. Now, the first thing, it's getting quite easier to become gluten-free with all the restaurants, cafes catching on. So one of the first places to begin with when we're going gluten-free is just to look out at the restaurants, look out for the options that they have on the menu. They may have a completely different menu option. They may have the words gluten-free beside it. It is getting much, much easier to be able to do this. And one of the best things that I like to do is just to simply check out whether the restaurant or the cafe has a website or a Facebook page and find out what their menu is. That way, before you turn up, you know that there's going to be some gluten-free options. Then when it comes to gluten-free living at home, the key is to understand that you want to avoid packaged and processed foods. Just because something's labelled gluten-free doesn't mean that it's good for you. Often these items will be full of all these different ingredients and loaded with sugar. So we want to make sure that what we bring into our house is going to be good whole real foods that our body enjoys. So one of the things that I love to share with my clients is to fill your pantry with one ingredient produce. And what I mean with this is just to get rid of the packaged processed foods, the mixes, the sauces, the, all the things that have got all these different ingredients loaded into them and they're packaged and processed. And instead, fill your pantry with things like flour, with things like sugar as its own thing, with things like a ginger root, with lemon, with the one ingredient produce, so that you're not getting all this packaged and processed foods. If you do buy packaged foods, do look at the back and look out for all the different hidden ingredients that are in there and do look for the words gluten free because sometimes something that you may assume wouldn't have gluten in it can have it. Sometimes there's even toothpaste with gluten in it and so it's important to make sure that if you are really intolerant to gluten that you do look out for those sorts of things. Then when it comes to your pantry and the types of flours that you want to use, these are my favourite ones that we've always got stocked in the pantry and the key is to make sure you've got a good different variety and that you get to understand how these work. Now right from the top here we've got tabioca flour and this is a really really fine flour so you wouldn't use it completely by itself and you mix it with other flours. Then we've got almond flour and this is great and I really find that almond flour does a really good substitute for main flour with your baking. So if you've got a favourite recipe that you do love but it uses self-raising flour, often, I won't say always, you can just swap an almond flour for that self-raising flour and 90% of the time it does turn out good. But do be careful with it but usually this is the one that you can substitute for normal self-raising flour without the others and then the others usually need a bit of a mix. Then we've got here we've got buckwheat flour, brown rice flour and coconut flour. And the thing with coconut flour is that this can be very, very drying. So you wouldn't substitute this in for the exact same proportions as another freezing flour because it can dry out your recipes. And then with the buckwheat and brown rice flour, these can have quite a, a grainy sort of flavour and so they can make your um, dishes taste a bit more grainy and wholesome, so they can change the flavour slightly. But all in all, these are the types of different flours that I always have in the pantry, and these are what I always make the baking with, and my site is loaded with recipes, all using these different sorts of flours. So if you're unsure of what sort of baking, you, you know, how to make some beautiful, yummy muffins that aren't dry, and they've got good flavour through them, then these are the types of flours as well. And then we make beautiful sourdough bread using these flours too, particularly tabioca and your brown rice flour. So when it comes to gluten-free living, it's really important just to get rid of all the packaged processed foods and just eat whole real foods because when you bring into your home those whole real foods, you don't have to worry about the hidden ingredients because when we buy the sauces and the packaged foods and the different kind of marinades, that's where the hidden gluten can be. And I am very sensitive to gluten, and so as soon as I followed this rule and just started making things from one ingredient produce, that's when life started to get much easier. So I hope you find this useful. I hope that you get involved with all the different recipes and give them a go. And if you've got any questions at all, do let me know and comment below this video. I'd love to hear from you.